Welcome to this broadcast. My name is Paul and I am in Peterhead in Scotland. Very pleased to be here. Today we are in Ezekiel chapter 6. You know, friends, it's really important when studying scripture to see uh, the verity and the application of scripture to the individual, to all mankind, um, to different nations, uh, and of course, particularly to the Jews at that point in history, 2,600 years ago, at different points of what is now history, but was at, was at that point future, and then of course at the present time, and what this means for mankind, the individual and the Jews, uh, and the body of Christ at the present time. So it's very important to, to, to see that, that any portion of scripture has, has various applications, you know. Um, yeah, so Ezekiel 6, Let's get straight to it, friends. And the Devar HaYehovah, the word of the Lord, came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face towards the mountains of Israel, and prophesy against them, and say, Mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord Jehovah. V'devar Adon Yehovah. Thus saith Adon Yehovah to the mountains, to the hills, to the watercourses and to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, do bring a sword upon you and will destroy your high places. Your altars shall be desolate and your sun images shall be broken. And I will cast down your slain men before your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones round about your altars. In all thine dwelling places, the cities shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate. Your idols may be broken and cease, and your sun images may be cut down and your works may be abolished. And the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and you shall all know that I am Jehovah. Yet I shall leave a remnant. Yet I shall leave a remnant, in that you shall have some escape from the sword among the nations, when you shall be scattered through the countries. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they've been carried captives, when I shall have broken their whorish heart, which hath departed from me, and their eyes, which go whoring after their idols. And they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they've committed in all their abominations. And they shall all know that I am Jehovah, I have not said in vain that I would do this evil to them. Thus saith the Adon, Yahovah, smite with thine hand and stamp with thine foot and say, Alas, for all the abominations of the iniquities of the house of Yisrael, for they shall fall by the sword, by the famine and by the pestilence. He that is far off shall die of the pestilence, and he that is near shall fall by the sword, and he that is left and is besieged shall die by the famine, and I will to accomplish my fury upon them. And you shall all know that I am Jehovah, when their slain shall be among their idols. Round about their altars, on every high hill, on all the top, and under every green tree, tree silver. And I will stretch my hand upon them and make their land desolate. Yea, more desolate than the wilderness of Tiblath. In all their dwellings, they shall know that I am. 
So this is Ezekiel 6. Six is the number of man. So this is man in his natural state. Um, this is mankind in general. This is God's dealings with mankind uh, punitively, chiefly. Um, there's not a great deal of redemptive adjustment. There's not a great deal of the working of the Holy Spirit on account of the blood of Jesus for transformation and new birth. This is natural judgment uh, upon natural men. Um, one of the features of Ezekiel is the Adon Yehovah. I'm just wondering, I've covered this topic before, uh, not to elaborate the obvious, but if you go to the most wonderful uh, translation, uh, well, there are many wonderful translations, but if you quickly go to the, uh, the King James Version like that, the reason why we don't use the King James Version on this channel, whilst it is exceptionally wonderful and one of the very best translations ever, it is not the most accurate. The Derby translation is the most accurate. And it's a very simple reason why. If you look at verse 3, it says, You imagine Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Well, that sounds wonderful. And if all that's a Christian's ever known, they think, well, that's it. That's wonderful. And it is wonderful. It is. But that's not what the Hebrew says. It says, Adon, Yahovah, right? In the rest of the King James where you have the word God, it's the word Elohim, it's either El, Elohar, Elohim, and that's translated as the word God. Um, never is YHWH translated as God, that's translated as Lord, all capital letters, you see. Uh, and whenever in elsewhere in the English versions you get the in the Old Testament you get the word Lord of the capital L small O R D that usually represents Adam. But the reason why the King James translators have used here Lord capital L small O R D and then God capital G O D is because it wouldn't make sense in English to say hear the word of the Lord Lord. You see, hear the word of the Lord Lord. So therefore. Uh, the most wondrous King James, which I absolutely love. I think, as I say, it's one of the very best translations. You know, it's right up there with the Derby translation. It's you know, in the top five most accurate translations because it's not accurate uh, in this important matter concerning divine titles and divine names. That's why we don't use it on the channel. It's still a very wonderful translation. And if any of my listeners prefer that, that's perfectly fine, perfectly fine. So please don't think we're cultic or obsessive or legalistic. It's just we want the very best when we're trying to do some exposition. Now, so once again, uh, it's crystal clear there that the King James says, Lord God, but the Hebrew says, Adon Yehovah. See, so that's very simply why we use the translation that we do. And it's one of the unique features of the book of Ezekiel is this title, Adon Yehovah. Adon Yehovah. And of course, Mr. Darby translates that as Lord Jehovah, which, which is fine. It's far more accurate than, than the KJV. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. So here's Ezekiel. And he's already been through this business of being on his side uh, for a year and a month, eating bread made with cow's dung. And then he was on his other side for 40 days uh, to bear the iniquities of the house of Judah. He's already cut all his hair and his beard off, made this uh, image of Jerusalem and made sieges and battlements against it for over a year. And he's been a sign and a wonder to the Jews in the captivity in Babylon. Um, and now the word of the Lord comes to him again, saying, set your face towards the mountains of your Israel and prophesy against them, and say, Mountains of your Israel, hear the Devar Adon Yehovah, the word of the Lord Jehovah. Thus says the Lord Jehovah to the mountains and to the hills, to the watercourses and to the valleys, Behold, I, even I, I do bring a sword against you, and I will destroy thine high places. Well, a high place is something that men exalt 
over God in a place of reverence and worship and adoration and service. Mortals elevate their lusts and their wickedry because of their devilry and revelry. You see, human beings don't realize that uh, in many ways their father is, is, uh, is the devil. And every time a human being thinks, says, or does something wicked, they show forth that indeed the devil is their father. Their father is the devil. Um, I remember talking to an otherwise godly man a few years ago, and um, we spent a precious time together, just an hour or two. And then at the end of the time, he said something quite pernicious just completely out of the blue, something quite pernicious. And it reminded me of the fact that he wanted to honour his father, the devil. You know, and so even professing Christians that think themselves also godly and also holy, when they speak wickedly, um, what they're doing there is they're honouring their father, the devil, instead of honouring the Lord Jehovah Elohim, the Lord Jesus the Christ. And so there's coming a time when every mouth will be stopped and all flesh made subject to the Lord Jesus the Christ. The time is nigh and the time is here. It is now the end of this current evil age, the end of the rule of mortals and the end of the rule of demons. And all flesh will be rendered entirely subject. The righteousness, the holiness, the faithfulness, the power of Elohai Yehovah will be fully revealed and the whole planet will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yah Elohim. All flesh is creature possession. All mortals are as grasshoppers in the sight of Elohim Yahovah. All nations are like drops in a bucket. All flesh, all families, all mortals are entirely subject to the word of the Lord, to Jesus. And unto the Lord Jesus shall every knee bow, and every tongue confess he is the Lord. So this is the immediate future for all mankind. This is the news. If you're listening to this, this is the truth. You are all observed. You are all ruled over. You are all entirely subject. All governments, all nations, all mortals are entirely subject. The life inside every mortal is Elohim Yehovah. There is not a hand or a foot moves on this planet without Elohim Yehovah, the Lord of the whole earth. All mortals are simply the hand of Yehovah. I will destroy your high places. I, even I, do bring a sword upon you. It's interesting that um, Ezekiel is to set his face towards the mountains of Yah Israel and prophesy against them. And so he's, he's prophesying to the mountains, not to the Jews. The Israelites, which is very, very interesting, tells you uh, this is another feature of script Lohim, the logistics. You have the two mountains out of which come the four chariots, which are the same as the four horsemen in Revelation 6, that come out at the opening of each of the first four seals of the seven sealed book written within and without. And um, which book you find also. Um, at the end of Ezekiel 1 and the beginning of precise about this yes at the end of the book of Lament um, that Ezekiel is commanded to eat and to digest
And so um, sometimes uh, in scripture, the demons are referred to as mountains. That is to say their influence upon mortals. There's coming a day when all flesh will see the Lord Jesus Christ standing as a lamb slain in the midst of the throne of God, Elohim, Yehovah. A great day of revelation when all the sons of God will be made manifest. And this whole earth is groaning for the revelation of the sons of God, right at this moment. The feelings of Jesus, the son of God at this moment, are expressed throughout mankind. Every problem on this planet is connected to the feelings of Jesus. All human mourning is connected to the sufferings and feelings of Jesus. All humans exist and move through the finished work of the Son of God 2,000 years ago. All flesh is entirely subject to the will of the Lord Jesus the Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Anyone that's ever walked this planet does so through the atonement, the finished work of eternal redemption of the Son of God. So in Ezekiel 6, it's very, very interesting, 6 being the number of man, that Ezekiel stands as a man, indeed he's referred to as a son of man, and he's to proclaim to the mountain of Israel, not to the Jews. So that speaks to him proclaiming to principalities and powers the station of their influence. So it's, it's very interesting that that whilst the chapter is generally on the ethos of, of, of wrath and condemnation and fury and judgment upon sinners, we speak towards the mountains. Also the cessation of the influence of the work of demons and disorder pronounce the cessation of their influence. Um, and so if you, if you look at verse three, for example, friends, it says hear the word of. Yes, it's very interesting. If you look at verse three, mountains of Yah Israel, hear the devar of Yahovah the Adon, hear the word of the Lord Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah to the mountains, to the hills, to the water courses, to the valleys. Behold, I even I did bring a sword upon you and will destroy your high places. So initially and grammatically, it, it doesn't appear to make sense that God is addressing creation. God is addressing mountains and hills, the supply of water. God's saying, I'm going to bring a sword upon you and destroy your high places, you see. So it speaks of the corruption of the voice of the doomed, deluded demons that have corrupted and ruined the hearts and minds of mortals. That's what's in view there. So it's the cessation of the influence of doomed, deluded demons upon nations and families and individuals. That, that's what's being spake of there. And your altars shall be desolate. The word altar, altar, altar. Of course, in English, if you alter something, you change it. And so that has to do with mortals uh, listening to the voice of demons uh, and choosing the knowledge of evil, uh, which brought the death and sorrow and curse and wrath of God, the righteous indignation of Elohim, Yehovah, uh, upon mortals. And the reason why everyone who's ever lived has died 
and everyone that's alive on the planet is currently under the sentence of death. That's the truth. Mortals don't like to hear the truth, but the truth is that everyone on the planet uh, has the sentence of death upon them. Only the finished work of the blood atonement of the Son of God is the deliverance and the freedom uh, and the promise of immortality, the promise of physical immortality, the promise of eternal redemption, the everlasting righteousness of the ages, life and immortality. The immortal king has the power to resurrect all the dead, to bring in eternal righteousness, eternal justice, the whole councils of Elohayowa, the sovereign purpose is eternal. So what you're reading about here, friends, in Ezekiel 6, when you look a little bit closer, is the purposes of God through his word, through Christ Jesus, uh, bringing to nothing the influence of doomed, deluded demons over mankind. Sin S-I-N means Satan in nature. Satan is not a name like John or Jack or Fred. It means adversary, enemy. Nowhere in the Bible is the devil given a name. The devil is not given a name anywhere in scripture. He is given descriptive titles like enemy or adversary. He is given the nearest he gets is the, the light bearer. And persons say that his name is Satan or Lucifer. That's not a name. Uh, Lucifer doesn't even appear in scripture. It's a Latin term that simply means bearer of light. It's not a name. It just means a bearer of light. And it speaks of what the devil was in eternity before he fell into iniquity. Beautiful, wise and powerful. Beauty has lost his power, has lost his immortality, never to regain them. The devil himself is doomed, deluded, destroyed, and ruined. You know, see, and so mortals, through the blood atonement by the Holy Spirit, are clear of the world, the flesh, the devil, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and are clear to express the divine nature, clear to show forth the praise of him that has called them out of darkness into his most marvellous light to show forth the honour, the power, the majesty and the glory for so it's a great thing to look deeper into scripture friends and to realise that the word of the Lord, which is Christ Jesus, the Son of God, um, deals with the influence of doomed, deluded demons. Um, we read in the prophets great revelation of redemptive purpose, sovereign operations. We learn great things of God's ways, God's government over all flesh. We understand fresh things uh, about the purposes and the counsels of God, which things are not. Well, they are mentioned in the New Testament scripture, but certainly the old saying is that the, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And one interprets the other, and scripture is the scripture interprets scripture. So rather than a human being <clears throat> seeking to interpret scripture, you need scripture to interpret scripture. And that's why it's important to memorize the scripture, to be committed to reading it every day. I would like to prescribe an exact time, but I would say as a minimum an hour a day, if you want to be free of the doomed, deluded demon want to be free of the influence of the spirit that works disobedience in the children of wrath, you want to be holy and righteous and pure and good, then definitely you need to spend at least an hour a day in the scripture and preferably much of that reading the scripture aloud in your homes. 
you know, and uh, walking in the truth, you know. John 8, 31, 32, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples, and thou shalt know the truth, and the truth shall set thee free. The entrance of God's word giveth light. The sum of thine word is true. Christ is the word of God. The son is the word. The mystery is that uh, the son of the father's love, the root and the offspring of Jesse. You see, that's to say the creator and the incarnate deity that was born forth from the loins of Jesse. Jesse who was David's father. And then, of course, somewhat uniquely with that uh, wonderful title and descriptive of Christ Jesus, of God incarnate, you, a very similar one is, is the root and the offspring of David. So it's, let's say, the creator and the offspring of David. So it's the mystery of things that you have one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, or Yahweh, or Elohim is one, Yahweh. That's Deuteronomy 6, 4 and Ephesians 4, 6. God is one. God is one. You see? And so you have these revelations uh, through studying the scripture. What's your option, friends? Sports, fiction, sex, pornography, gambling, overeating, materialism, the esteem of men or the esteem of God, the glory of men or the glory of God. Where, wherein do you find contentment, friends? Wherein do you find peace and serenity? It's in the giving we receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. A lot of professing followers of Christ, they are unhappy and discontent and irritable in their lives. Why? Well, because they're not helping others. They become self-centered. They've not found their niche. You know, the day of modern technology, Anyone can find their niche and find ways to encourage, counsel, comfort, and support others. See, the idea is, is to help others every day. That's the thing. Today is a new day, friends. Reach out, support, encourage, counsel, comfort, console others today. So the God's sword, God's word, you see, the very word sword has the word word in it. And we read in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living. Sharper than any double-edged sword to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Where far there is not a creature and apparent before him with whom we have to do, but all things are naked and laid bare. It's Hebrews 4.12. And then we read in Hebrews 1, uh, God uh, in former times spoke through the prophets, but in these latter times has spoken in the person of Son. See? And then uh, Isaiah 9, 5 and 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Of the increase of his peace and of the increase of his rule, there shall be no end. He doth rule on David's throne, upholding righteousness. Our God shall accomplish this. So the mystery of it that Christ Jesus is the Father of eternity. That's the mystery of it. Jesus said, I and my father are one. He that hath seen me hath seen father. Before Abraham was, I am. From the everlasting hills, we read in Proverbs that Christ was brought forth. The mystery of incarnation, friends, the mystery of the father and the son. The two mountains of Zechariah 6. Jehovah and Jehovah. In many places in scripture, friends, you have the Lord and the Lord. Uh, one example is when the judgment, the wrath, 
when the wrath of God was unleashed upon the wicked Sodom and Gomorrah, it says Jehovah rained down fire from Jehovah. The Lord rained down fire from the Lord. So there's clearly two persons there. And of course, in Psalm 110, Yahovah said to my Adonai, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies the footstool of thine feet. And then further on in the scripture, unto the son he has said, God has said, thy throne, O God, endureth forever and ever. So you have God the Father saying to God the Son, thy throne, O God. Think about that, friends. God speaking, saying, your throne, O God. Doesn't appear to make sense to natural reasoning. It's the mystery of the, the complex unity, the triunity, the heart and mind and counsels of God, the Godhead. It's, it's very interesting, friends. It's easy to become party political about these things. Well, I'm a oneness or I'm a Trinitarian. No, no, no. Just be faithful to the scripture. Neither of those terms appear in scripture. You've just got to study scripture. Let scripture interpret scripture. Unto the Son, God has said, Thy throne, O God, endureth forever and ever. And a scepter of uprightness is the scepter of thine kingdom. For thou hast loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy companions. So you have the word of God coming through Ezekiel, being pronounced to creation, to the mountains, the hills, the water courses, and the valleys. And God says, I'll bring a sword upon you. So that's judgment and wrath and truth being brought upon creation. It's an interesting thing to think of the true size of things. All mortals are as grasshoppers. Nations are like drops in a bucket to God, Elohim, Yahweh. The whole planet fits in the palm of the hand of Jesus. The sum total of all mortals that have ever walked this planet would be less than a tip of God's little finger. Men are simply the hand of your Elohim. So most, in, most interesting that, that Ezekiel is commanded to proclaim the truth to creation. And God says to creation, I'll bring a sword upon you and destroy your high places. So nobody can see the devil, but the devil is real. He's doomed and deluded and destroyed through the finished work of Christ Jesus. And because Christ Jesus is the life inside every human being on the planet, that is how God is ruling the planet, because Christ is everyone on the planet at the present moment. The Son of God who already fills the whole planet. The Lord Jesus is every man, woman and child upon this orb. The only guardian and saviour of the whole planet. That's how everyone's kept safe, you see. Christ is everything, everyone, everywhere. That's why the devil can't have his way. The devil tries to undermine and distress the Son of God every day through various means, but is completely unsuccessful because... There is neither counsel, purpose, nor understanding against Yahovah. And the counsel of Yahovah is over everything. All flesh is entirely subject. With joy and with gladness eternal to the saints rejoice in Christ. The Lamb's wife is the King's daughter, 
all glorious within. The queen in gold of fear upon my right hand. Everyone lives and moves and has their being in Yah Elohim. This is the kingdom of Elohim Yahweh. And this is Christianity. We'll be back soon with another podcast. Friends. In the truth, under the blood, declaring the Jesus Christ, and read the.